Doesn't matter whether they broadcast World War III, there's nobody out there to watch. Uh, who can afford 250, 300 bucks for one of those receivers? They've already sold 300 receiver sets in Ohio alone. 300? There's more than 300 radio listeners within two square blocks of Euclid. Do you think our show is going to get canceled because of television? Not right off the bat. I imagine they'd trim cast members first. Well, thank you, Arthur. That's very reassuring. You won't get canned. You're both too valuable. Anyone is replaceable. I'm not the first to meet you, Skrull. They have no cause to let you go. What if he finds out we're engaged? That's the kiss of death to Ginger's career. I should know. Arthur and I got engaged when I didn't think I had a job. And John. besides, I, I haven't told anyone it... Except Miss Westcott. Westcott. Yeah. Let me help you with that, Miss Westcott. Why, thank you, Mr. Schillip. There are so few gentlemen around these days. So tell me, Mr. Schillip, have you and Miss Zay both set a date? Not yet, Miss Westcott. Well, be sure to notify me ASAP. I want to mark it on my calendar, and I'll need to notify Mr. Mellon and hold auditions for New Tomato. Uh, Miss Zabo and I want to keep our plans a secret. Mr. Lemo will never allow a married woman to represent his juice, Mr. Schillip. Miss Westcott, if you breathe one word to Mr. Lemo about my engagement to Ginger Zabo, if you mention it, whisper it, suggest it, hint at it, or even think about it in his presence, I will tell him that the chaperone of the Lemo All-Stars ended up in my cabin, in my bed, in a state of intoxication wearing nothing but a smile. I'm not as nice as people think I am. I'm studying to be a lawyer. There's no one else I trust with management at the thrift store, Victoria. Oh, Ruth. And after the board sees the record profit turned by our humble venture, I don't see how they could deny a seat to the person responsible for that profit. Not that the seat on the board would interest you. Oh, all right. I'll sign on. Oh, bless you, Victoria. Oh, is that... The, my granddaughter. Oh, how precious. She has your son's dark hair and eyes. Doesn't look a thing like her mother, does she? Well, yes, she does. Well, I, I mean the coloring. Oh, I forget you haven't met Gina, have you? Well, I wanted to introduce myself to her at the stadium. At but... the stadium? Well, Peter browbeat me into keeping him company at several of the games. I kept meaning to go down and say hello, but never did. A lovely young woman. You don't see many fair-haired Italians. Gina has dark hair. Well, then, this couldn't have been her. This young woman was definitely blonde. <laughs> I went to several games myself last season. Oh, you did? Yes, we have season tickets. And the box seats are reserved for season ticket holders. And the same people sit in the same seats week after week. So by season's end, we all know one another. In fact, we become almost chummy. So, she was nobody, and here I thought she was your daughter-in-law. Perfectly natural mistake. <laughs> oh, dear. I could strangle that awful woman. What has Mrs. Sloan done now? Not Ruth Sloan, Victoria Bridges. Going on about how she saw Mr. Sloan at the stadium with a young blonde. I imagine the same woman you and I saw him with that night. Now, don't go jumping to conclusions. And it's not our place to say a word. I wasn't going to mention it. Oh, if I ever find out you've been running around on me, Abel Davis. Me? Woman? Men! <laughs> with this. What is it? Television receiver. You're kidding. Should be a big draw. For radio myself. Just give me a hand. Barziza, telephone. Sorry, Mr. Barziza must have left. I'll tell him you called if he returns. Goodbye. Thanks, now. That's the third time your office called and the last time I cover for you, Barziza. Next time I say he can't come to the phone because he won't leave his poker game. This is a bridge game, doll. Shankly Bridge. And I'm the Queen of Sheba. You in? I'm not covering for you, Barziza. Wait! Barziza, interrupt. 
30 seconds. You're not back in 30 seconds at your gift to the pot. Give me a break, Judy. I'm having a streak of good luck like I never had before. You're missing your deadline is what you're doing. Pearl Roadhouse. I'm not here. You saw me leave. One moment, I'll see. It's for you. Do you type? What if I do? These are my notes on the article they're expecting. Type them up. I'll make it worth your while. This is chicken scratch. Don't matter what you say. It's the annual preseason stuff. The tribe, strong points, weak points, yammy yammy. We got a shot at the pennant if a feller's arm don't break. And, and the lemon in the bullpen, give him a rest now and then, yammy yammy. I know you, Judy. You can write this stuff blindfolded. I'll pay you 10 bucks or 10% of my winnings. Huh? Mr. Barziz is not here, but he left a message for his office. Yes. So file the story before 9 a.m. 9 a.m. You're welcome. Bye. Ten bucks. Take the ten percent. I'm on a roll. Arziza. Ten bucks. What would you say to buying one of those new television receivers? Strikes me as a fad. But go right ahead if you think it's worth the money. It'd be worth the money if it kept you home more often. I'm at home every night of the week. Not during baseball season. Oh, now, Ruth. You could go to the games with me. <sighs> silly me. I'd forgotten how much you begged me to go with you. Why is that silly? Well, Victoria Bridges was going on and on about how you were seen at the stadium with some young blonde, and that led me to imagine all kinds of ridiculous scenarios. Victoria said I was having a rendezvous with a blonde in front of 40,000 people? Hinted, suggested the possibility. It's just like something Victoria would say, isn't it? <laughs> Imagine you, of all people. <laughs> you mean say I'm too old for a woman to find attractive? Heavens no, Michael. But you'd be much too smart to take her out in public. <laughs> Thank you. <sighs> what blonde do you think Victoria could have been referring to? Who could know? Do you think maybe she meant that youngster that you gave my ticket to? Perhaps. Where would we put a television receiver? Oh, I don't know. Anywhere on top of the radio, I suppose. I don't remember you telling me that youngster was a blonde. Blonde-haired. A blonde. Didn't I? Look at the prices on these receivers. Well, I prefer the one with the mahogany cabinet. Just. How much of a youngster was she, anyway? A teenager, by all appearances. But from my aging perspective, the difference between 18 and 28 is sometimes not discernible. Well, that explains it, then. Would you like for me to explain things to Victoria? Mm. Best let sleeping dogs lie. 